Hello there, let's talk about this. The F8 Railjack. The Railjack is a sniper rifle from the game Planet Side 2, available to the new conglomerate. However, unlike a regular rifle, it doesn't use explosive power to propel a projectile. Instead, it uses electricity. This rifle is what we call a railgun. But how much electricity does this need? First, we need to talk about how a railgun works. And in order to do that, we need to talk about the Laplace rails. This is an experiment where you have parallel rails sitting in a permanent magnetic field. On one end of the rails, you've got a generator, and on the other end, you've got a movable conductive rod. When you run a current through the rails, the current will actually go through the rod, and the rod will start moving. This is due to a force that is called the Laplace force. In order to know what direction the rod takes, you need to use the right-hand rule. The thumb corresponds to the magnetic field, the force corresponds to the index, and the middle finger corresponds to the current direction through the rod. The formula for the Laplace's force is actually quite simple. Now, I'm not going to go over the math now, but it's on the screen. Basically, the formula says, the bigger the rod, the bigger the current, or the bigger the magnetic field, the bigger the force you get as an output. Now the question is, what happens if the rod moves fast enough? Theoretically, you could accelerate it enough to turn it into a projectile. And this is how a railgun works. Now, there are a few differences to point out. First, the rod is replaced by a projectile. That projectile has to conduct electricity, like a metallic bullet. And secondly, there are no permanent magnets. Instead, the magnetic field is induced by the current going through the rails. But wait a minute, what is this induced magnetic field? Well, when you move a charge through a conductor, like an electron through a wire, you actually induce a magnetic field around the wire. So in our situation, because we don't have a permanent magnetic field, we actually need to calculate the intensity of the magnetic field between the rails. Okay, so the next section is going to be a bit math heavy, but that's fine. Just don't, don't leave, don't faint. It's going to be okay. We're going to go through this. It's going to be fine. It's just that I need some formulas before we get to the estimation of how much current the railjack draws. Okay, let's get back to it. So first, we are going to calculate the magnetic field between the rails. For that, we are going to use MP's law. I'm not going to go over the math, but if you want to check it out, it's on the screen. What you need to take away from that formula is that the higher the current, the higher the magnetic field. However, the farther you are from the wire, the lower the magnetic field intensity will be. In a railgun, the rails can be considered as wires. So this is the magnetic field induced by one of the rails. But for future calculations, we actually need the average magnetic field. So we integrate between the rails. Again, the math are on the screen. But remember, both rails induce a magnetic field. However, between the rails, the magnetic field actually align, so they can be added. So this is the average magnetic field between the rails. I is the current, mu naught is the magnetic vacuum permeability. It's a constant, don't worry about it. A is the width of the projectile, so it's also the width between the rails. And R is the radius of the rail. Now that we know the average intensity of the magnetic field between the rails, we can use the formula we saw before to calculate the Laplace's force applied to the projectile. Here is the resulting force. We observe that the higher the current, the higher the force exerted onto the projectile. Now that we have the force, we can use Newton's second law to bring in the muzzle velocity and the length of the cannon. On one hand, we integrate between 0 and the muzzle velocity. On the other hand, we integrate between 0 and the length of the cannon. Both give us the time at which the bullet leaves the barrel. We put one equal to the other, and we can then isolate the current. So this is the formula of the current in relation to all the parameters that we have. Finally, to calculate how much electricity the railjack uses, we need some information on the rifle and the bullet. We'll use a bullet of mass 42 grams and of diameter 26 millimeters. Additionally, I measured some dimensions on the 3D model of the railjack. We can infer that the cannon length is about 75 centimeters, and the diameter of one of the rails is about 7 millimeters. Let's plug all these numbers and the formula into Wolfram Alpha. We get that the railjack pulls a current of about 181,000 amps. Now, how much is this exactly? Well, in physics, the exact term is a f ton. Why would anyone use this? Seriously, it's an insane amount of current. Honestly, I'm surprised we don't see these things explode every time they are being used. Also, this is an optimistic estimate because all losses, friction, resistance, etc. have been ignored. If anything, the railjack is probably drawing more current than I calculated right there. It is more than five times the current produced by a lightning bolt. To give you an idea, your car battery is pulling about 100 amps to start the engine. You need about 130 million joules to turn the entire water in your body into steam. 
meaning that this current is probably enough to vaporize you instantly. It's an insane amount of current. So obviously there are a few problems with the railjack. First, if you look at it wrong, you die. Secondly, how do you provide that much electricity? Currently, no battery nor capacitor is able to provide that much current. This is also why the railjack guns of the US military are so big, because they are literally pulling millions of amperes. And how do you deal with the insane heat generated by the joule effect? Also, you need to deal with the Laplace's force of each rail exerted on each other. Because yes, the rails repel each other, causing huge structural stresses. The point is, you cannot supply enough energy to the railjack to fire it. And even if you could, it would probably destroy itself instantly. So yeah, these problems are some of the reasons why railguns are not really a thing nowadays. So there we are. This was a case study of the F8 railjack. And more broadly, it was an introduction to railgun physics. Is there any other subject you want me to study? Let me know in the comments. You can also catch me live at twitch.tv forward slash axol underscore. Feel free to leave a like if you enjoyed the video. I will make more of these so you can subscribe to not miss them. Thanks for watching.